Hey guys, welcome back to Motorcycle Maintenance Channel. On this episode, we're going to show you how to change the horn and blinker switches on the left side handlebar of this Honda CBR 1000. Stay tuned. Okay, the first thing we need to do is take off the seat, which is a five millimeter Allen key. We're going to leave the screws there though, so that we know where they are and they will just slip right back on again. And the seat's off. Just put them over here. Next, we're going to take the gas tank cover off. Again, five millimeter Allen key. Now, if yours is a stock bike with stock bolts, these will also be a five millimeter Allen key. This, however, has different bolts in it, which is a Phillips, which will happen to a sport bike over time. this little plastic shroud. And then on the other side, there'll be another plastic shroud that looks just like it. Next, there'll be two five millimeter Allen key hexes right here at the top. Move the handlebar out of the way so you can see it. That's right here. And there's one directly on the other side, same location. Just lift that up and it comes right off. This is what's really nice about Hondas is that this is a cover. So if anything happens to this, this can just be replaced. You don't have to get a, a new gas tank. All right, now we're gonna unbolt the gas tank so it can be lifted up and out of the way. Five millimeter Allen key. And we will unbolt these things. On the other side, there's one just like it, just right over here on the other side of it. Now we're gonna take off um, the gas tank bolts back here. 10 millimeter. Yeah, I gotta take that hose off and then this uh, electrical connector down here. So once you get the gas tank up, you can use a piece of a stick like this or a piece of wood and just kind of prop it up like that. So that way you don't have to hold it the entire time. And then we're going to get down here and disconnect this gas line. And you just get like a little, a little pick or a little screwdriver and pry it, pry this little, uh, Honda calls it a quick release, but it's kind of hard. So you got to kind of pry it like this and pull at the same time. So we're going to pull this hose off, which this is an old bike and it's never had its gas tank removed so the hose is kind of on there real good. Um, I'm probably just going to have to cut it and then reattach it a little shorter. But it's almost off. And there it goes. And that's why we're, you know, part of what we're doing is replacing the radiator hoses for the same reasons. They just kind of deteriorate over time. Oh, look at that thing, that was horrible. And I'll just recut it and then reattach it. 
or I might order a new hose. But that hose is off. So after that hose comes off, now we're just going to disconnect the um, fuel pump, which is this black uh, 2P connector down here. And this fuel pump is connected by this black 2P electrical connector. Uh, it just connects in like this. It looks like that. And to reconnect it for you, it goes like that. And then to pull it out, you're just going to push here and then pull. And then now your fuel pump's disconnected. It's a 10 millimeter bolt there. any of the electrical connectors or hoses. So our fuel line. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this fuel line here and then reconnect it a little bit lower on it. This is a 15 year old bike so sometimes that happens to the rubber hoses. So that is out of the way. Now we're going to take this little shroud back. There we go. And now we can get to the hoses that are down here that also need to be disconnected. And this one over here. This bike has a power connect commander, obviously. That's what these little extra connectors are down here. Next, we're going to take this other shroud off. It goes around the outside of the airbox. We're going to start by removing these screws. Remember, no power tools on the motorcycle. I'm going to use it to take off the screws, but we're not going to use it to put them back on. Now I'm hoping by taking these off the outside of the air box. Now we can remove the air box without having to take the whole top of it apart. All right, and then we'll disconnect this little middle sensor. Yep, there's a little screw way down there. There we go. Now it came off. But it doesn't want to come all the way back. See, so you could do this kind of and squeeze in there with it without removing your gas tank. It just makes it so much easier to take that off. Take out the air filters. There we go. And now, underneath all of this, there's other screws that we have to get to. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve other screws down at the bottom. Taking off, this is okay. Putting on, it's a big no no. And we're going to kind of leave them in their place too, so that we can put them right back where we got them. Stacks 
here. Go. Okay. So there's going to be a little pipe here since this, he does not have the pair valve mod, which is all right. We're just going to disconnect this pipe here from the air box. It's a little clamp. So we just removed this hose here on the underside of the box um, with this, we just grabbed these two things like that and moved it down. All right. Now all of this was to get to this electrical connector right here. All right, guys, we're finally here where we need to be so that we can plug our new switch and unit in. Um, so we're going to unplug this one and it came out and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I kind of did that off camera first and it was really hard. <laughs> so you might have to struggle with taking that out, but I promise you it comes out. You just kind of have to push this little tab back and pull um, with a lot of force. All right. So this is, so this is out. And we're going to take this off because this needs to go on the new part right here. Um, and this kind of comes out this way. So, and this is a pair valve and we'll do a video of how to remove one of these eventually, but you don't want one of these. You can get rid of this for performance. That's off topic. Um, so now that we got this out, we're gonna disconnect it from the horn and the clutch. I'm gonna reach my hand all the way down here to these cables. And they just pull right out. And you just yank one and yank the other one. And I'm looking at it right now. The blue cable was on the left or the back of the bike. The green, no. Oh. Okay, so this green cable was on the rear of the bike, and this black and white cable uh, was towards the front of the bike. Or maybe it's a brown cable. I just found out recently, I don't know my colors very well. Um, and it also connects here to the back of the clutch. Same kind of connectors that go to the, so it connects the same way it does to the horn, to the back of the clutch, right here. We'll take that one off. And it looks like a black wire. And then the lower one here, a brown wire. I think. Well, you see what color it is. This is the lower wire right here. Looks kind of brown. And the top one's black. All right. Now let's disconnect it. We're going to get a Phillips head screwdriver and disconnect these two bolts that go right here and clamp onto the handlebar. All right. So Phillips head screwdriver. We're just going to un. un screw each one of these to take it off and I'm hoping we can just uh, unscrew it enough to where we can take it completely off the bar without removing the grips or the bar end stop if we have to though we will but we're gonna try not to 
There's one. Like it comes out without having to remove the grip. So this is a common problem with these guys because these these components are exposed to the elements and stuff. Water and moisture gets in here. So there's one reason why we're just gonna get rid of this one and put in the new one. So we're just gonna plug this in. All right. this guy in this one mm -hmm. put a little trim piece in So, I kind of split this in, in two to get it to go through here, to go through the fork. But um, the solid wire we're going to put before that on the, on the post to the rear of the bike. And the stripe wire we're going to put on the post to the front of the bike. Um, On um, the clutch slit switch, on the clutch switch, the, wi the solid wire is going to go on the bottom and the marked wire is going to go on the top. Pretty much just how you took it off, you're going to put it back on. Alright, so when you wrap this thing around the handlebar, um, there's a little hole that this knot, that this knot, this little thing goes into. It's like a pin. It's right, kind of feel it there. It's right there. So that's where it goes. And then you put, then that clamps down nicely on top of it. So you just put that there. So the shorter screw is going to go to the rear of the motorcycle. And the longer screw is going to go to the front. And you'll see that the connection's a little longer on the front.
the side didn't close up right. No, I wonder if there's like not a whole. Now that we've replaced the switch, we're going to put go ahead and start putting the air box and everything back together. There's little gaskets on the bottom of here, and you want to make sure they stay in place. Um, they are. Now that this is on, we'll go ahead and start screwing in the the screws. One. Actually, we could probably just fast forward through this part. So these screws are holding down the bottom of the air box. Just gonna go through and retighten these because they kind of shift as you tighten them down to the air scoop underneath. Like there's three screws per stack. Smile. Jeez. Throttle open, throttle closed. Those are the throttle bodies. <laughs> Before we go too much further, let's go ahead and reconnect this hose right here. Um, I don't want to forget about it. It goes to the bottom of the air box and it also goes to the, uh, to the pair valve. But this recirculates your engine into your, your engine air into your air box. There we go. Three more screws here go to uh, the other two throttle body ports. The outside one start at first, and the, and the middle one. Kind of how we did with those before, we're just going to come back around and make sure we got them all. The 
These do want to be snug because they're on top of a big vibrating engine. Then we'll put our looks like Canon air filters so they're dirty. You can see they're dirty. Put those back in. But um, these breathe a lot, so it's kind of not too, it's not so bad that they're dirty like that because it helps filter more air. And then when we take this apart again to do its valve inspection, because we have to do all this again to do the valve inspection, we'll go through and shoot them out real good with compressed air and grease. But we're not going to do that right now because, like I said, it actually helps the filtration process of these uh, high flow air filters. Close the top of the box. And seal her up here with these screws. They go all around the perimeter of the air box. All right, and then this last like one, or this last one goes right in the middle. It'll kind of find its way to the hole. Remember, to put on these bolts, we use hand tools, not power tools. It's important because these bolts will can strip away that the plastic could use power tools or it could carve out a new route. This little plug back in, this great plug connector. All right, guys, when this bike came in, the horn button did not work. We replaced this switch mechanism here, and now the horn works. That's how you replace your horn and blinker switch, everybody. All right, guys, stay out of the grease. See you next time.